everybody. Hopefully, hello. you can hear us this week. We had those problems last time, Jane, didn't we? Yeah. Well, hello, everybody, and hello, Craig. Good, uh, good to see you all. Good to see you, Jane. And it's very good for you to <laughs> see me. A lot to see you all day. Boy. Well, we're going to say a few hellos to everybody, and then we'd like some questions from you. Anything you'd like to bring up um, and guide us, because I think it's more fun that way, because then we don't have to waste our time preparing uh our, our, what we're going to say and it's good actually it's great to just take things as they come so let's have a look what we've got that looks interesting what was this one someone said evening both this is ali from lovely devon lots of people will be watching from mauritius as you are on the air they have a link and yes you are popular on the island so oh, we're popular nice. in Mauritius. I've got a friend, Kavita, on Mauritius. Yeah, you had friends from Mauritius. We, yeah. Yeah. And the Seychelles. Yeah. No, no, well, that's Savita. interesting. We Savita. have pockets of um, fans all over the place. We've got quite a few fans, I think, in Japan now. Yeah. And um, we were in um, some magazines in Vietnam, I believe. But that's nice, guys. Thanks. We'll say hello to everybody first. But remember, we have some questions from you too. Sheila. Good evening, Sheila. Looking forward to a volume on session with you both from India. Yeah, yeah, we'll try to get that right this time. Very sorry. Apologies to you guys. Okay, yeah. So I'll keep an eye on the on the buttons to make sure nothing comes oh, up. There. Alexandra, hello, Jane and Craig from Sicily. Glendale, California. God, and it's actually, hot here too. we are very hot in this room because it's a small enclosed room, actually, which is the, the office lighting. we use for this. And boy, today it's hot. You're like in Barbados. Yeah. I mean, it just tells you all about global warming, doesn't it? Or does oh, it? Um, good evening from Iceland. That's now, that sounds a much more cooler place. It to might be not today. be cool there. Uh, probably hot there, too, because the weather can get pretty hot in Iceland, too. Hello, Jane, Craig, and everyone in chat. Ohio, USA. Yes, Hello, USA. And it's nice when you chat to each other as well. That's always fun. Yeah, it's nice. That you're going be to kind to throw each some other. nice questions at us as we go along. I'm still at the top of the top of Virginia, the list. Virginia, USA. Moment. Hi, Mr. Fox. Hi, Jane and Craig. <laughs> Hi, Foxy. I saw you laying in the road the other day. I'm sure I did. <laughs> Hi, Craig and Jane from Donna and Danny Bogner Regis. Oh. <laughs> But it's hot down there. It's uh, <laughs> slightly different to Mauritius, I reckon, but that sounds pretty good. It's got a seed on uh, Hello, everyone. Get to stick some of your questions up, your things up. Your hello. Catherine, hello. I was going to say Eva, a few quickie Craig hello so you can see us coming up. Yeah. Jessica. But let's have your questions. Love from what Canada. would you like? To, where hey, would you like hey. us to go with our chat about all things paranormal, basically? All things Tangerine spiritual. Cottage. Hello from USA. I thought you were going to see Tangerine Dream then. Oh, they've got, they got something Debbie? on TV tonight, I believe. Oh. Tangerine Dream, yes, yes. And Brian Eno's got a new album. Linda, too. You'll be good pleased evening. To hear. I enjoy Jane's ghost stories in the last video. Do you have any more? I have plenty. Actually, so we could always go for some of the ghost stories. That's always quite an interesting topic. I know you like that. Let us know what you think, guys. Let's have a few of your... Um, I was going to click through a few. I'm not going to call everybody out. Hello from Norway. Hello, hello, hello. hello, hello, hello. hello Germany <laughs> too. Hi, Gary. Both. Hello. It sounds I've got to be careful Great. because this is how I get spammers. Hello, Namaste. I'm 17th December 1983. I'm Mumbai born. I'm 38, not married. What do I find in my life partner? No. Contentment. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, not married. Got, Contentment, yeah. Craig. We don't, we don't do personal questions on here. Uh, I, I know it's, it's nice to ask, but that's uh, that's that's more for those Facebook psychics with the tarot cards. We, it's more like a chat today, guys. And we just talk about, you know, all things, all things that happen in the world, uh, things you'd like to know about. I mean, the ghost stories could be an interesting one to explore. I'm going to come down the list a little bit now and see what the people put some decent questions up. Want political a, ones, though. Well, you can do anything you want, you know. But we tend to make uh, the, the yeah. My next video I'm going to do is about healing, Craig, and all the different it? forms of healing, intuition healing. Uh, we could start off with some ghost stories, couldn't we, and things like like that. I mean, you could put some of your your ideas up if you like uh, on that as well. well. Let me go to my channel because that's uh, different. So, so you don't want to you don't want to cover that one. No, I've already got my own channel with that. Okay, how's the future of China? Looking very dodgy. I Absolutely. see. Um, there's tanks on the street. I caught uh, someone told me today in China over these protests over um, all what's going on with the mortgages there. Because guy in a, in China, you have to pay your mortgage in advance. So if you want to buy something, you've got to pay for it in advance. And, and don't we also, if they haven't completed the mortgages, it gets passed down through the family and it continues on. Well, the problem they got is in new properties that the places aren't getting built. 
and uh, so everybody's wanting their money back and they've got tanks on the street so my predictions about a revolution in china are looking more and more likely at the moment and so this is a very a dodgy time uh, i'm concerned they'll arrest trump in the end they'll lose do you think they'll arrest trump i think there's a good possibility See, they'll Drew, try to I'm concerned they arrest trump in the end they lose but why should they arrest him well because of all this business they, they just raided his house the fbi had just raided his house and taken all secret documents that he's not supposed to have i don't know if you saw the press no, I haven't. I didn't no look at the uh, well it's but i did a video about it yesterday and it yeah. is bad news actually and the the objective is to stop trump being able to run for presidency it shows that they're very scared of him they all say they say oh the man's an idiot but you know they are scared of him he's a clever bloke actually he's going to play into his hands you know um we can jump around for all sorts of things here i had a dream that extraterrestrials took me in a spaceship hooked up by electrode told me that i wasn't moving as fast as i should my tomb roommates had the same dream about me I think that was uh, the same girl last week. Yeah, she about... yeah, quite a few times down at Drums. We've got so, mm. often got some good questions. I look out for anybody. It's got a good that's questions. That's a dream, though. But interesting, but the thing about it is the two roommates had the same dream, and that's where it starts to get interesting. Why on earth would everybody have the same dream? It sounds and like... Why about extraterrestrials? Well, it sounds like telepathically they're all in tune with one another. I think Craig. these are mutual dreams. You often do get mutual dreams where people have the same sort of dream. But, of course, the implication is that... Um, Aliens were involved there, wouldn't they? Um, well, Craig's an alien, but don't tell anybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you think the veil really does get very thin at Halloween? Are we more likely to see ghosts then? Well, it depends, doesn't it? Some people call up the ghost. It's a pagan thing, really, isn't it, Halloween? But some people actually do see things um, from beyond the veil. It depends what you're looking for, doesn't it? Doesn't need, mean Halloween's all satanic, does it, Craig? Well, I think Halloween and other things actually, because Halloween's obviously known about in the West. But um, I think in earlier times, uh, we did have much more of an awareness at certain times of the year and certain times but these are usually where the holy days are had special significance they're very very much into that in india of course today is a full moon here in the uk and of course th this is another very powerful time we just had recently uh, i think it was yesterday i can't remember the name of the festival there's another big festival in india where it all has to shut down for these um spiritual events so i think certain energies are certain i think we have just as we have real weather we also kind of have a spiritual weather and spiritual seasons, um, which happen throughout the year. And they're, they're certainly in India, they certainly believe that you do your pujas and things at certain times when the planetary positions are right. Um, and I'm sure Halloween's the same, that there are certain times when, um, you know, the powers in the air are different. Well, I know. think in China, they have ghost ancestors. They bring ghost chairs out. Uh, in Mexico, is it called the dead? Well, there's uh, actually a village where they dig up the dead and they dress them and they have drinks with them and they put them back in the grave. Yeah, yeah, there's all sorts of... I, I mean, certainly surrounding death, there's certain times are supposed to be important. There's also a certain energy when someone dies, that there's an energy of the time. There's something very special, in, like an atmosphere. I mean, it's not just psychological. There's something about the energy... And the same when a baby's born, I've said this before, there's an energy in the air, you know, not just the excitement. Well, I know my grandmother used to say for every person that dies, a new baby's born. And um, it it's remarkable what happens because they definitely believed in all that. Yeah. Someone say their Nana's saying, could you tell us something good that's about to happen just to lift all the tribe spirits too much negativity? Well, I think this is a very testing time for everybody this year. All around the world don't you craig 2023 mm. would be better because it's got selfishness coming out we've got high food prices food shortages got people arguing you can't even get a doctor in that i think don't the hindus call it the year of uh, darkness what's it called Guinness with why the kali yoga yeah. so they're not the year of this is centuries of it well, it's very much like it at the moment. um good stuff i suppose you think good stuff don't make the news and good stuff don't get 
in your head really when, often when you're picking stuff up because you you'll see the the climb the, the the dramatic stuff just like in dreams it's drama you see the drama and i think sometimes when we do psychic work we kind of get an over exaggerated picture of what's coming up um uh, there are i'm sure there's good things coming up <laughs> We really are turning into the prophets of doom here. Uh, I, if I think of anything, that or I'll tell you. But, um, uh, but there, there's there, the good stuff is that ultimately it's all heading towards um, an awakening. I've spoken about this Absolutely. many times, you know, and this is all about ultimately awakening. The thing is, the important thing is where you focus your attention. You see, if you focus your attention on the outside world all the time, it's always going to be bad news because there's always bad things going on, even when you focus your attention all the time and everything that's outside of yourself. But if you have an inner focus and you're focused on the spirit within, on the divinity within in particular, and the inner light that's behind that, then you're always happy no matter what the situation and it's not some sort of con yourself sort of happiness no it's not because you're in the center of the cyclone you're in a place of peace so we can be happy all the time that's what my book be happy is all about i think you know? one good thing will happen when the new prime minister gets in you'll find there'll be an increase in pensions this year definitely Good. So I definitely, no, I'm sure I'd, it won't be much. No, no, no. <laughs> no but it's going to help. It's going to help some because what I find disgusting is these MPs sit in Parliament every day and uh, not debating that, and they get three hundred and sixty-five pounds and a pension, and it gets one hundred and twenty-five a week. Yeah, I find that disgusting. And we are up for some pretty heavy times ahead, particularly yeah. with fuel prices here in the UK. They're not going to go down, yeah. and they're going to get, get all worse. Your well, buy all your candles because we will have electricity cuts and although they say Liz Truss is going to be the next prime minister which I predicted of course um that it's I think she and she says she won't be given handouts she'll be forced to because I think people are going to be in um uproar about the fact I mean what do you think about all these energy price hikes and all the people making huge money out of it you know not just the, we've got all the electric companies the gas companies the petrol companies they're all booming at the moment their share prices are going through the roof because they're making so much money um and they're talking about your fuel bills here in the uk being something like five thousand pounds i mean that's a lot of well, money you have to put the wages up won't yeah, they? and that's what will happen and that's when it starts to spiral out of control because you know if you, you, you go on strike don't you and that's where we that's what we're going to see we're going to see we're this cycle again like we had in the 70s, 70s 1975 yeah. I'm old enough to remember yeah, three day week yeah and they had a bread strike that's when arthur Skullville was yeah there. yeah and coal and everything it was terrible yeah, and then world crises as well because the problem this time is it's the whole world's in this boat um I'm just clicking random here uh, do you think Boris Johnson's going to get suspended? The privilege committees. Actually, I don't think so. I tell you what, I think is going to happen. I think he'll come back. He's going to. He's going to be. You ain't seen nothing yet, as well, isn't he? I mean, he's he's going to come back again, and I think Liz Truss will have him in his cabinet, even though he's in her cabinet. In her cabinet. But even though. Um, uh, see, women interrupt you and ruin it. They shouldn't even be in politics. Oh, right? uh, no tea for you or dinner tomorrow. <laughs> I can't be interrupted then, can I? <laughs> but anyway, no you know, I, I, I think I think Johnson's going to be back in the cabinet, actually in the cabinet itself. Um, yeah, looking forward to basic cost of living rise. You see, I think one of the things, we're going off into politics and things again here, aren't we? But I mean, I think we, we really do have to rethink the way, way we have money nowadays because, I mean, money's changed so drastically. I mean, we, it's not something you carry in your pocket anymore. It's all a transaction on computers. That's watches. changing the way we do things. And I think the way we earn wages and, and the way whether we should have a minimum wage for everybody, you know, um, these are questions I think are going to become very big in the years ahead. And I don't think it takes a medium to tell, tell you that. I think these are things that, you know, practically we've got so many financial problems ahead and particularly with the fall of china which is yeah. happening soon and stephen i hope you and uh, kathy are better now Chaz, can Jeez. mediumship and psychic abilities be passed on to your children and grandchildren they certainly can it's not necessarily when you say the seventh son of the seventh son and things like that it's um is it in the dna is it in genetics or that but I know that, um, <clears throat> I know like Craig's daughter, Celeste, got strong telepathic links. If we think about her, she rings. 
And I know uh, Danielle is very much amazing. And Willow, her grandchild's amazing. She used to see colours and auras around things, didn't she? And very knowing. Yeah, perhaps it does run in families. But I do think actually when you actually put, I think every all families have, everybody has psychic abilities up to a point. But I think those that have to bec become mediums, almost have to become mediums, the, the ones, because I think it's something that you bring from previous lives, personally. I think it's earned in previous lives. But certainly the ability... Um, to be a potential towards becoming the medium, to the perceptual skills, perhaps that part is inherited. But I think ultimately it comes down to the, um, you, the these things, um, uh, you're born with the gift and no, it can become, hey. and just like it can come in any family, anywhere. It's yeah. not the seven Me sons of the seven sons. It can medium pop up anywhere. A true medium, it's a, a gift from God. It's a holy gift and a, a service. And someone keeps asking, is the golden age coming? It will, it will in time. But, uh, you know, these things take a long time. I think we've got Centuries. a rock, we've got a, the, the transition between the age, ages, age of Kali Yuga into the better ages. Um, it's a gradual change. And over those times, they say that things become rocky. People like Yogananda uh, spoke a lot about this. And, and uh, that there are, the, between the yogas, there are difficult times. It's a bumpy path. But I think we just got to keep our, mind on the fact that eventually all of this is happening so that we can all waken up the world exists for us to awaken and i think it's wor working on a much more global scale now carry on Craig. John, you read it then it's because he wants a gold water i have an identity twin that had passed would you agree the correction what's that connection continues so uh, when the summer's... Uh, well, I can tell a story there. Elvis Presley had a twin brother that died at birth. And he's always sensed that, because um, it's Elvis' real name was Aaron, wasn't it? And he always sensed that his brother was around him. You can yeah. do from the spirit. I'd be interested if you answered this one, Jane, because people keep asking me this. And I'm curious, what do you think about these Please cryptocurrencies? Tell us Is it good short or long-term investment, at least to use, to buy solid... Earth? Well, it can go up and it can go down, can't it? So I'd be very cautious. I'd, I would throw caution to the wind because sometimes people think it's good to buy stocks and shares when they've dropped. And I think one has to be careful and you've really got to know what you're doing. It's gambling, of course, isn't it? And it's, it's become a form of gambling because people are all jumping in on it. And you always worry it's going to be a, a bit, bit like what they had in the Victorian times when they had the South Sea bubble and everybody invested in companies that didn't even exist because people got investment crazy. And, of course, that's how cryptocurrencies work in many ways. But what will happen is the bubble will eventually pop. Yes, yes. But those that are left will be valuable so a few people will make a lot and a hell of a lot of people will lose a lot and that's why you've got to be so careful you've got to be on the right ones right. otherwise it's a it's a very i think it's a very dodgy game but then we will keep obviously cryptocurrencies because actually our normal currencies become like a cryptocurrency i mean how often do you use cash nowadays you know i've been using cash more recently of certain reasons and and um and, and I think I'm not used to this. So every penny you do on your card, don't you? We never see but It's the money. not to you see cash and it brings it in reality how much you are spending, Craig. Well, that's when you actually dish it out and you go shopping. You think, God, oh, 200 pounds and whatever. <laughs> it looks a lot. Kali Yuga is supposed to be coming to the to to end, and we're all supposed to be somewhere between the night of Kali Yuga and the dawn of Satya Yuga, the golden age. And this is it. It's um, the different ways of expressing it too, as I've said, the different interpretations of whether it's straight into a sort of a golden age of Satya Yuga or the um, electrical sort of age, because there's different blendings of different ages. But we're definitely going towards a better time, I think. Mm -hmm. Stephen, thank you, Jane. We are good now. Been a hard couple of years for the whole planet to warm now, but winter will be cold. I think winter's going to, I think we're going to have torrential rain um, well, during the winter months. To. No, but torrential. I get the feeling torrential oh, rain is like coming. Monsoon. Unprecedented, yeah, in Europe. And you get landslides. Unprecedented rain for 2023. Landslides, that's what I can see. But we're all alive. That's what we got to think. We're all here. Blazing hot it is. We're still alive. Do spirits feel the temperature like we do? 
Um, well, the spirit world's different to this world. I mean, they say that the um, the spirit world itself is filled with an endless ethereal light. It's like a, it, everything is incandescent and alive with light. Um, the descriptions in some of the um, uh, spiritualist literature. Um, they would be aware of all the sensations in this world, but not in the same way we are. It's, an, it's a world beyond the normal perceptions, the spirit world. It's like the easiest way to describe it, I think the closest we can come to an understanding of it, really, yeah, is what we, what we experience in dreams. Um, and particularly in very, very, very vivid dreams, you know, the sensations are all there, um, but the world is very different. You can suddenly be in one scene and next you're in another scene. You're suddenly someplace and you could be somewhere else. Um, so that's how I think the reality over there works. <clears throat> yeah. Alexander, I usually give my what's that, pennies to homeless people because they have come annoying. Do you think that they would get rid of what's that, spare change, spare change soon? soon. Yeah, they, I mean, this well, is—they I mean, must suffer from that, don't they? With the, yeah. you know. But I mean, when we took our childhood back, there used to be farthings then, and half an eight million things, and people used farthings. to save up farthings. Don't you want farthings? I don't think four I think farthings to well, a penny well, crate. Must be a bit older What's wrong with you? I don't think it was any oh, farthings. Not much. You're not my toy boy exactly, <laughs> are you? But <clears throat> and then they used to save all the silver and things like. That. I think it's a good thing if you can give some loose change to a homeless person because you don't know how much they suffered or even if you buy them sandwiches or a drink of course there's lots of scammers around as we know they usually sit by well, the... well, i think what alex ryan's yeah. saying really is that in a cashless society yeah you, there's no cash like being dished out to those at the bottom of the pile i mean it's the same if you go to um any third world country or, or and, and there's all that they the beggars depend on those odd pieces of pennies and change um and in yeah, a cashless then, society and then if you've got a card you can draw out cash and give to them can't well you? i suppose so. but it's more of a spontaneous thing we're not using cash that's what i'm saying we're not using cash uh, even in india now it's it's illegal to beg um because everybody has a minimum sort of wage there so that nobody's supposed to beg so they're telling people not to beg so on another level um cash can stop um begging becoming a way of life which is one of the things that um they've tr they've tried mm -hmm. radically to to do there i believe and as i agree with jason there you know um give them food give people food yeah yes i bought food before they accept it if they are for real of course they do of course they do <clears throat> and i mean you don't know what kind of life those people have had they might have been sexually abused they might have gone through a divorce they might have lost everything, you know, and you've got to have kind hearts, haven't you? And I think you know, you only got to look at uh, the shoes or the, the fingernails and that. But if you see ones with mobile phones and all like that, then they aren't hard up, are they, Craig? Well, and I think actually, a karmically, giving food is a very powerful act. Yes. I mean, because what you're doing, you're actually giving life. You're actually sustaining life by giving life food. Is. And, and I, I believe that it's one of the most spiritual things you can do to give food. And particularly if you can give it with your own hand, mm. um, because then it's from from your hand to, to the, the person. I, I don't know if some most of you, maybe some of you have seen my movie Mystic Journey to India. Um, it's on Amazon Prime. And it's so it's, I put a free version up here on YouTube, too, although that's peppered with ads because of the music copyrights. Um, but. Um, the, one of the most important parts there was when I fed the children in the, um, uh, the school for disabled kids. Awesome. It was important that I was the, it was from my hand, I from the spoon, I was the first one to set the food off. And that became the spiritual act. And I think this is what we should do with a lot of our charitable type of work, each of us, is to try to do it as an actual hands on. Because mm. it's very anonymous when you give it to charities. And I get really sick of these charities. When you look at the actual figures, I'm not quite sure how much of it, but 99% of it goes in admin. Yeah. And every pound you give, one penny goes to the person yeah, in need. Another thing, what I don't agree, I mean, food banks are great, but all these big supermarkets, they have people they want to donate food out of their shopping trolley. They should be in a position that they should give food freely anyway, all these high powered supermarkets, Craig. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think with free food, actually, there ought to be a sort of a level where certain things are free. I think transport should be free. I think there should be available water everywhere in the world. That's another thing that should be a basic human commodity that really the world should get together and a basic food 
availability like soup kitchens or something like that for the whole world so that people are not put into these desperate situations mm. where they have to move from their the, countries of birth the best one to get I, a basic the best income. one i would support is the south asian army because they really do go by the police and give food to people they're a really good organization but the others they take it all in administration and um, the managers get um, all rewards don't they craig yeah yeah the people agreeing with a lot of what you say there jane yeah, that's right and and also this whole charity thing is important coming up here with some of the thoughts i used to be high up working for a charity yes. and totally agree with you i don't give to charity you know i do it myself and if you can i, I think, think that's good and i think karmically like i say that's it's so karma. much better to do that you know yeah. i mean we're trying to run our our ourselves ultimately as a not-for-profit organization and become a charity ourselves but i would bulk at the idea that everything got sucked into admin I, I really would like the idea where for example if you're buying a cow for someone in india you put that money into say we hope to one day do this with ourselves but as, as, as any organization you put the money and that money with your folk goes to buy that particular thing such as a cow for somebody and your photograph is shown with that money that you give mm. you know so you know that all that money you've given has done that act right and they can tell you if how much has been taken out or whatever so you actually do an action an individual action so that your karma your personal karma is linked into that action rather than give it into some anonymous fund which is just in so many ways so open to corruption and um when we when we set up the not-for-profit company um, we were doing it with all these thoughts about what we want to do. And I remember the, the guy I set it up with says, well, what you've got to do now is you've got to milk it and take the money out with this. And, do this. and I thought, this is what people are obviously doing. They just use it as a tax avoidance thing. Uh, and it shocked me. And I thought how horrible that was, you know, that 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 that, that, that is able to go on and so many of the so-called foundations like we're calling it foundation but so many of the foundations out there are just tax avoidance schemes yeah. uh, i can remember when we've done a television thing that we handed a check over for three thousand pounds with the pia brown ward for cancer and we had to wait to see this person and it's like we we're shown to a broom cupboard literally a broom cupboard and um, I don't think we even got a letter of thanks or anything. We just handed it over to the person coordinator that was in charge. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they didn't even realise we'd given the money, did they? I mean, that was a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're anonymous. And, it's not, and you know, and uh, people that work for charities should not get wages. I mean, how about doing it that way? That you actually pay to work for the charity. You know, you supply your own pens and papers. You supply your own mobile phone. You don't use it as a reason to, to find expenses out of everything. And an ideal world would seem a long way off, that especially if the economy collapses, according to history. Because so I think we're going to need, aren't we, the, the future ahead. I mean, because this our shows are about what's happened so much in the future. Um, the way ahead is going to be a rocky path financially, isn't it? And the charities are all saying, oh, we can't cope, you know, but give us more money. We can't keep going. We, but you look at all their buildings and everything, and it's, it's a That's terrible right, waste right. of money. Yeah. They're, they're built like um, insurance companies. Uh, and really, I think we're going to have to rethink all that. I think there needs to be a lot of serious, sudden rethinking because there's going to be, you know, the grain harvest in Ukraine has fallen apart. And, uh, you know, we were saying we were saying at the beginning of the year, both of Jane and I remember last year, we were both saying about food shortages. We we're saying food shortages ahead. Well, people said, oh, well, there's going to be shortages in the supermarket. There is serious food shortages. And, running out of and we're running, going to run out of crops. Uh, and so you know the world is going to be seeing this year so after year after up, year Paul. so and it means how do we respond to that we respond to that like a golden age what would happen in a golden age in a golden age everybody would give sure and, and if we all shared bags to go around absolutely this because people get greedy and countries get greedy you know just grabbing a few I feel sorry for the people suffering from the huge wildfires going on right yeah, now. Yes, so do I. And I, I think we've got to be very cautious and careful at the moment, especially the new forest in Hampshire, because you get some stupid person might throw a cigarette butt down or something like that, or it might, you know, I really feel sorry for that. And hopefully people can all get together and help out. I mean, the horrible fires going on in um, all over Europe. France is terrible ones at the moment. 
I remember watching Pelosi and, and others fighting and stalling stimulus for the people while they still made lots of money. And mm. this is often a problem, isn't it? Because I, I often think of Gandhi. When Gandhi died, apparently in his bank account, he had only a literally a few dollars. You know, I mean, he did accumulate no money. And he always said, everything that is beyond my needs is taken from the mouths of the starving, which I thought was a lovely phrase. I remember reading somewhere by him. And um, the problem is our politicians are very rich people, which is the complete opposite way round to what it should be. Really, wouldn't it be better if the people that led the world were a little bit like Gandhi characters, i.e., you don't get a wage, quite the opposite. You live a life of austerity during that period. And that our leaders were, were people who, who actually lived austere lives in pure service for others, not for the sake of power. Wouldn't you vote them in? <laughs> and wouldn't they, wouldn't they do a good job because they got nothing to gain out of it and have no gain later? If it was done purely as an act of I mean, service, how can these rich, then the world is sort out. Rich people in Parliament identify with an ordinary person when they're going off to Mayfair and Scots and having a lovely luxury dinner and then somebody, some old lady, open a tin of um, um, Frey Benta's beef for her tea in that. It's disgusting really. They should put pensioners wages up or I really believe yeah. they should. I mean we, we talk about this isn't all clever ones, this a lot of this is our opinions about yeah. things but I'm sure we express a lot of the same spiritual ideas that a lot of you guys feel. I mean, I think we get our, our finger on the pulse with what's going on in the world quite a lot of the time. And it's sometimes about the specifics. Uh, thoughts about the fires of over 100 food-related factories in the USA and Dutch government policy towards their farmers. Well, it's exactly the same all around the world. The Absolutely. policies towards farming, whether it be in India, where there's major problems at the moment, uh, everywhere around the world, I think, you see, farming is another thing. It's been turned into an industry, hasn't it? You know, this is this is to feed the world. I think we got to rethink basic things. Like I said, you know, okay, I sound like I'm away with the fairies when I say politicians shouldn't get any money whatsoever. But actually, I would have thought in an ideal world, the politicians, for example, were chosen from by their character and nothing else. You know, and nothing else, nothing about whether you've got enough money to run a campaign. Then the world would be a safe place. That would be a that would be, and I think we got to think rethink radically everything about all things capitalistic and so forth, or even socialism failed, capitalism failed. We've got to find some new way of doing things. I mean, in China, in some places, there, because of the collapse in the um, financial problems there, they're actually paying for mortgages by barter, by paying in goods rather than in it's money. Not a bad idea. <laughs> not a bad idea. That's the original. But that's a sign that things are going to go yeah. down the slippery slope, you know. Uh, I work on tills in a well-known supermarket, well-spoken, you didn't actually say which one, no, yeah. and when stock is short or prices go up, they get onto us thinking it's our supermarket's fault. It's very stressful for everyone at the moment, it is, isn't it? And it's true, isn't it? I mean, I it's not necessarily the fault of the supermarkets, although they're obviously there to make profit, um, but there are dangerous increases, I think. Well, ridiculous. It's not just a penny, it's a pound, isn't it? And I mean, for example, my mother showed me where there's some butter it gone up to nine pounds. I mean, just simply don't buy it. Well, the problem is, it's like it, 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 if there's a shortage of things, the price can go through the roof, can't they? Yeah, yeah, there's going to be a, a shortage of psychic readings, everybody. So you better buy your psychic <laughs> readings from our but website, then, otherwise you're going to be in a yeah, desperate but then when situation. You think, when you think, you go back to the old <laughs> ways, like, you know, farms, they made their own butter, um, milk and cheese and things it looks like we're going back backwards instead of forwards absolutely it? yeah yeah i see the so i'm just hook hooking on some of the comments here right. uh, you know that's right kathleen we'll have to start caring about each other i mean when we had this virus that went around in the pandemic people were more kinder if somebody ran out of flour they'd leave it on their doorstep and people were much more like wartime sort of feeling weren't they yeah yeah 
not that I was around in the Second World War, because I definitely wasn't, Craig. I wasn't even listening to you, John. I was clicking all these comments. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> uh, working in politics in history used to be a very risky, dangerous job. I tell you, working in history department would be a dodgy job nowadays because nothing about history is being retained. This is another one of those things I get very cross with. You can't that, wipe that, history out. That, well, you can change history. And we've can't always had that out. through history people changing history and then the, the, the research has to be done to work out what really went on you know because they tell the stories of the emperor to please the emperor um but the reality was quite different and now we're twisting and changing our history um and and, and saying that you know um britain wasn't britain and you know and i just get so cross with the codswallop you see and and of course you know you see it all on on the on the telly programs and, and the war programs and you know who won what and the rest of it, it it's very makes me very cross because i love history and history is such an important thing so without it how do we learn how do and we I become think wise it's quite disgusting knocking our statues down in england uh, relating history craig i wouldn't dream of going to a country and knocking their statues down would you no, no, I suppose that's true. But there's symbols, aren't there? And this is the problem is who decides what symbols are put up. I knew a woman that was homeless in California and she told me she wasn't safe in the shelter due to sexual harassment oh, from men. Okay. And I know, see, homelessness in California, we're not very aware of it here in the UK, but it's become, and in New York, I believe, it's become a huge problem over there. I mean, cities of tents coming up. I mean, and that's in, that's in one of the richest, I think the richest country in the world. Um, so the discrepancies, the discrepancies between which and war, <laughs> rich and poor, has become <laughs> has become awful, hasn't it? Really, um, and and this is always going to be the it's always going to be it's always the same in every way you look. One or two take the lot, you know, and they keep the lot, and they don't share a penny of it with anyone else. You see it in the world of politics. You see it in TV. You see it in 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 books and writing. You see it in the arts. And you see it in personal life with people. People always want the whole lot. And once they get in, they shut the door. You know, you, you see it. Psychics that used to work on some of those television programs. Once they got in, they make sure no one else gets known about. You know, you always want to look after your own all the time. It's a very divisive world. And we end up with, you know, people living in tents. If we had a sound, I better read it if you're not going to say anything. Oh, if we had okay. a sound financial system, i.e. without speculation, cheaper housing for all, local food, a lot would improve. The current system gives the wrong incentives. Right. Yeah. And I, I think sometimes, you know, we with, with things like welfare and and, uh, and things like that in, in everywhere around the world, we always give people money. Um, but Jane's mum was given as a lecture about how we should give people food tokens. Um, and in many ways, wouldn't it be good if everybody could be given not a minimum wage, but a minimum basics for food? And if you were short of food, you could always know you had a token you could use. Perhaps they could have a very short shelf life so that they, um, you know, they only last for the week she or the was, day. She so was that, talking about the welfare state. Yeah. She was talking about in her time, it was called the Labour Exchange. You were offered two jobs. And if you didn't take the second job, you didn't get your money. Yeah, she was saying about how we should always, people forget um, that welfare coming in is not related to work. You should say you used to have to go down, sign on, get up in the morning and do it. But then at the same time, there's going to be a lot more people that are in very desperate situations because um, she was always on about the people that were the shirkers and things. But there's going to be a lot of people going to be pushed into very difficult situations soon. They're going to see very, very hard conditions ahead. Yeah. And we're going to need something that feeds people. And gives yes. people water and gives people some form of shelter. And it's going to be some tough times ahead in the next few years. And it's not going to just be this year and next year. This could be quite a long term Seven thing, years. in my opinion. What's that, Eric? Eric Peters, I believe what is going to happen with China in the near future is going to affect everyone in the West. What do you see about this, Craig and Jane? Well, I've said a lot about this in some of my videos already. And I think China is the danger flashpoint so for the China's whole world. China is quite powerful because I know in a very deep trance meditation, it said that China will try to take the world over. And China will fail, I think, ultimately. And China's going to implode. There's going to be a revolution in China. And I think it's getting closer 
and close them now. I've been talking about it a long time. That's a good idea. A basic food cash card, maybe. That's a good idea. You see, so the cash card could be used in the supermarket. Yeah, that's a good idea. And I would say you can only use it same day. So you can't save it up or spend, gather it all and sell it or something. Mm. You can only use it day by day, a daily cash card. It's always the wrong Food people, for the day. The wrong people get help. And those <coughs> really need help. Don't get the help yeah. in this country. Because if you're it's desperate, so you would go down with your food card to get your three pounds or five pounds worth of food, whatever it might be. But if, if you were, if you have the card and you think, oh, I'll go down near the end of the month, that's no good because your cards run out. If you put a limited time on it, it's then the people are likely to the people that desperately need it will go down and do that because that's a lot of money to me but if everybody had one you know for, and you wouldn't say oh, I, I use it on the weekly shop you can't you can only use it that day right. so you'd have to use it short term i think that would be some there's some quite good ideas here isn't mm. it which has a lot of homeless people have had mental health health problems yeah and it's so sad because there's they're pushing out the community and schizophrenics are living in toilets and things. It's so wrong. There should be help for everyone. And there's a lot of mental health and homeless when we had all that virus around. There should be places of safety for them. They should get help. It's disgraceful, really, just pushing them all out. And around us, and I expect it around, around a lot of other people in the UK and probably around the world too, um, a lot of the asylums, as they used to call them, um, are now... Um, turned into um, luxury homes, uh, divided the them up into the psychiatric. Psychiatric, well, used to be they, they still got the word asylum no, from there. Are, I think the word asylum's good. It is a place of sanctuary. It means, but um, it's become an out of date word. True, but they've all been turned. All these Victorian buildings, which still could be used to this day because they're built beautifully, all been turned into luxury homes. The ones near us and around, you know, there's nowhere for people to go. Oh, isn't that lovely? There is still goodness in the world. We had a soldier of PTSD living in a bus shelter. Local people fed him until he could be helped. The landlord of the pub cooked him a proper meal every day. That's really nice. That's kind. Well, that's what we need, isn't it? That that's type lovely. of thought. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Pat, for that one. That's. Um, do you have got any nice stories like that anyone um i mean we're always worrying about the world out there and we think the place is a terrible place with awful people running it and everything um but you know uh, but it's so nice when you hear good things like that. i see she's put another one up here too we have a community larder where people can just go along and get food there's a community fridge and a freezer fridge as well freezer as well <coughs> you can take your spare food there uh, if you have too much so it's like a food bank but it's been that's run good. by the local community that's, a good idea. that's down in cornwall isn't it so that's yeah, that's good. what you see you still got a kind of a community spirit there yeah. because you're not overrun by the big big cities quite so much yeah and that's that true. many schizophrenic refuse medication and help unfortunately well some of them do there's uh there's the paranoid schizophrenics and there's those ones that i mean it's frightening for them because the chemicals in their brains different to what most people have and it's quite frightening scary but they do need help if they refuse medication that's why it's best for them to be a place of safety and for safety for the public because sometimes you have the schizophrenic that stab people yeah in one of your shows you guys discussed how some housing costs will drop in some areas more than others could you explain this in well, more detail already, isn't well it? i think we're going to get um yeah i think we're going to get a, a basically a very volatile housing market where we get prices going up and down now house prices usually stay pretty stable they say there's no nothing better than investing your money in bricks and mortar but i think we're going to see people unable to pay their wages pay their bills i'm going to all the housing projects at the moment are based on the idea of people can only buy new builds which are basically rip off mortgages and i think that some of this is and it requires both parents of both um male and female um, man and wife to put all their money in to support a household there's no room for any maneuver whatsoever so don't take a psychic to tell you that eventually this is going to pop and i'm i see um I see a housing crisis with lots of houses coming empty and house prices being some houses being sold off for a song because a lots multiple well, you, repositions. You know what will happen? It'll go back to the olden days that people won't be able to afford to have mortgages, houses, they'll just rent rooms. That's a nice one, Jones Giants stand there too, to just giving um spontaneously to people, you know. 
uh, Joanne says, I was out one day and had bought a big baguette sandwich and I see a homeless person and I gave it to him and said, you need it more than me. Well, that's a lovely thing to do. See, that's genuine because you're giving it from the heart. So you're feeding someone from the heart chakra to that person. That's compassion. That's lovely. And this Blanche saying, now this is more of my sort of channel type one when I do my coffees with Craig Blanche, really. But um seems that the Democrats try anything to avoid that Republican win midterm and elections. Well, I think it's pretty clear now, when I said it at the beginning of the year, that they're going to sweep both houses, I said then. And that seemed pretty unlikely. But it's looking quite likely now which will put the um, Democrats in an absolute minority position. So you can imagine why they're so worried. I think the Republicans will win. And it's not just because of Trump. I think it's because um, the Repub that people are fed up with, with, a, with a sort of um, Pinocchio sort of style president who seems to be just like a sort of a puppet that reads off a monitor and gets it wrong every time. I mean, he's another one that should be one of the homeless, really, the way he's oh, going. I of course, of Reagan, did he? Did he close? And it's the same here. We've had it consistently. Um, mental health has been neglected. Mm. And the problem is mental health problems have increased, not yes, decreased. Yeah. Especially once the young people. You know, the world we've got at the moment has become more and more well, bad, it, particularly is, social media. It's all and about the... profit because all these hospitals, psychiatric, they're in um, acres and acres of grounds. So they're shutting these hospitals down and they're building on all these grounds. Yeah. Like they did at Cold East Hospital, Craig. I know, that's it's what all I was, about part profit. of what I was thinking about. And uh, and um, the other one, um, I can't remember the other one up the road too. Uh, we need more kindness with each other uh, and where to help each other and live down close, it says. Absolutely, you know. Will they abolish the House of Lords? Coming in with a completely different question. Not yet. Well, perhaps Eventually, we can yes. them tonight. Yeah, I think it, I, I actually think it would be a thing to yeah, be rid I of. Think, yeah, uh, I, I know it so. acts as a self, as, as a kind of a restraint and a sort of a safety thing. But the problem is, it's been abused. It's jobs for the boys, isn't it? it and is. and um, really, it's not really doing what it should do. What's that club? Really? In Vancouver, thinking? they're thinking about reopening a psychiatric facility. It's been shut down for forty years. Gosh, 40 Look at that! Years. Isn't it interesting? You start getting stories from people around the world from yeah. your local stuff. You know, it's needed. Yeah. It's very much When needed. I worked at a school, I had an immigrant child who was always hungry. I would give her her food every day to take her home to her family. You see, there's a lot of acts of kindness going yeah, on in the lovely, world. You know, just it? even amongst the, those few of us that are watching now, you know. Um, I've tried to give food to homeless people and they have refused more than once. Well, there might be there might be some that are alcoholics and that they usually feed their stomachs up with milk, don't they? And, and, and but if you if you if you come onto this show late and, and you miss the live, tell us your stories. Put your positive thoughts about things that you've done to help people or acts that you've seen others do that have been uplifting. Because sometimes it's nice just to read the comments sometimes and see all those nice comments in there Trump about good like things done. Man in Winchester, when they used to close the um, cake shop down, and they used to give it to all the homeless people. And used to have a big trolley and used to go around giving to the homeless people and share it. Yeah. Yeah, do yeah, I do. Yeah. Another one coming up on the Trump business. Uh, Republican Party is totally split now between Trumpeters and non-Trumpeters. What do you think of this? Of course, this is a problem for them in terms of their votes, because what the problem what happens is if you have a split vote, you either you're a Republican Trump or a Republican. You've got you, you know, you've got two parties there within one. And that's um, divide and conquer. So I think that is a dangerous thing. I, I think they've all got to get behind one idea. Well, I think um, what will happen ultimately is probably a new person will come to the fore. I've spoken before about a black woman that will lead the Republican Party. But you'll have to see my other ones for that. Uh, quick question. I had a friend shot himself in the head because he thought he was going insane. He swears he has seen gnomes. Uh, what's that about? Elementals? I don't think so. It sounds like he had mental issues, didn't it? Yeah, I had a friend that shot, uh, killed himself who thought he was being pursued by a clockwork train. And um, so, and, and, and another, another one who, who thought he had to cleanse himself with fire and set himself on fire in a petrol station. I mean, uh, all sorts of crazy things happen um in the mind of a schizophrenic and for them it is completely and totally real it's like you know a voice in your head gone mad uh, and telling you what to do it's a, a very threat to the very 
um, whole idea of selfhood is being a threat. Everything is a threat. There's no worse illness in the world, I think, than schizophrenia. And fortunately, we do have quite a lot of cures for it. A third can be cured completely, and just a third can be just an episode. A third can be of a diagnosed people can be have a serious life issue. But those ones that have the long term problems, there are lots of drugs to treat them. And well, a lot of people follow this channel that might have those issues. I know because you know, I obviously get interested in telepathy and psychic stuff. Go and get treated if you do have a problem because there's there are, some of those drugs will really help. Well, my there's um, some people that have got personality disorder and they've got many personalities, yeah. and, that, yeah. and that's hard for them to deal with too. I need to buy your book, Craig. I always have weird dreams. Yeah, I dreamed of William last night, our dog, your yeah. dog, rather. A nightmare, you call that. No, he wasn't. <laughs> when, I, when I met Craig, I had three lovely dogs. William was a cross between a dash hound um, and a terrier. And Craig, he didn't like Craig because he was only used to being with me all the time. Then I had um, a collie dog, Lukey. And then I had a Jack Russell patch, remember? Yeah, very helpful person there putting up information about an adult dating site. Very useful. Okay. So it's good to see that sort of stuff, being people doing good jobs there when we talk about people that do good things. Um, I don't know. Gnomes are weird, but supposed to be lucky, I thought. Are you uh, sure you don't mean pixies? <laughs> actually, dreams and the unconscious can throw up all sorts of stuff, good and bad. Yeah. And I think when you're interpreting... Um, a, a, a symbol sometimes they're what you call archetypal symbols they're kind of universal symbols that have been passed down from generation to generation and often they're very personal i'll do you some stuff on dreams if you want to follow the coffee with craig sometimes i'll do a whole but you a should few write more. a book about gnomes no, i've got the same question okay hang on um what's that one i'm not reading half of these as they come up i think the pandemic didn't help people feel very disconnected connected and other people's lonely isolated it caused an awful lot of um uh health issues for people i think i just had a dream of craig and jane coming to one of my childhood homes and making friends with my parents and others what does that mean i mean actually you'll be surprised how many people have dreams about me and jane now i would think that's very worrying <laughs> i wouldn't want to have a dream about me um i know it, we kind of might be symbols of something in your mind you see we probably represent something um, about an aspect of your life maybe you however you treat the show you know you might think oh Craig and Jane they're nice people they, they that's what I'd like to be like I wish people were like that in my life you know um those so those dreams will pick up on everything and quite a lot of the stuff you watch on the screens um will often feature in your dreams but I'm surprised how many people do because I think we kind of represent something I think now should British workers in China leave for their safety um I've had people coming for readings from China, you know, by email and things, and Hong Kong in particular. Uh, and I think it's probably wise to start Absolutely. making moves, make, um, be honest. Plans. Yeah. Because uh, Lily, that's a Chinese friend, she worries about Taiwan all the time, doesn't she? Yeah, because this whole Chinese thing, you know, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a paper democracy, isn't it? I mean, it, it's fake. I mean, what's running it is one of the most totalitarian um, organisations we've ever had run by a small elite of people mm. with vast amounts of money and influence. And once that money goes, uh, and once the common people are uh, without money, we're seeing it with the mortgages in the building at the moment, when people start getting hungry, God knows what's going to happen in China. Um, most Westerners have already left since they're no longer welcome there and get scapegoated for problems, do they indeed? That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, um, I would say I think it was already safety. bad when I lived there years ago. And mm. I think that that can often the case, isn't it? We mm. often scapegoat um, minorities, um, whether that minority be a minority in our own country or we're, if we're a minority in another country. Um, you know, thank you for giving us 20 SEKs, whatever oh, SEKs are, you, <laughs> Swedish, yeah. I suppose. Thank you. <laughs> Crowns, I think that is. Thank you very much. Uh, my daughter's a teacher in China. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, obviously people are going to make their decisions and I, I'm sure you, it must be worrying thinking about uh, China. You know, there's another nice little story I just missed earlier on. When my daughter was 13, she saved her allowance one summer. I gave her 20 bucks a week to clean and do laundry, use the money to buy new school clothes for two little girls. Oh, that's lovely. Now, isn't that it? heartwarming? Yeah, you that's know? lovely. Good um, karma. You got. know, we, we look at the world 
and we it's see all sweet. the bad guys doing all the bad stuff and the big big stuff going on but there's the small acts of kindness that are the real where the real the widow's uh, mites as it were yeah. where the real work goes i know on. our granddaughter willow she had beautiful long hair <clears throat> and she cut it short and donated that hair for children that lost their hair with cancer so they could make wigs yeah she's done similar and danielle wants to do something soon uh for the the, the children um, we've got autism too because our grandchild's autistic and she wants to raise money for a lot of the autistic mother, uh, kids the mothers are having struggling some of them there. and she said it would be nice to do something um to sort of raise some money which we're gonna not doing yet but we were gonna we're gonna do something like that so watch out for it guys thanks and also if you know if you want to support this channel um become a patron please because if you become a patron which you can find in the description below um in the description section um you go to the link to the craig and jane page in the patron you can join as a patron which you become a tier or one one sort or another it can be a very small amount like three dollars a month or you can pay a bit more and you can come and join me on the zoom sessions on patron um we try to give a little bit extra for the patrons too behind the scenes stuff when we can um and it helps us to keep this whole thing going because we we also we've got a studio which we're trying to get sorted out at the moment and it helps with all those things and we've got some plans for um centers and things which are working in the background um so there's a lot that we, 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 we're trying to do as well. So if you feel that way inclined, a small amount for our um, not-for-profit organisation uh, would also be very not, not greatly received. Not a small amount, but give from the heart. Well, you can give very large amounts as well. Yes. In fact, there's one or two people talking about helping us on a big scale. But the small bits is also All the important. most important, really. The, the little bits are the, um, the, the most important. Mm -hmm. We're getting close to the end now, folks. Gosh. People eat cats and dogs in Asia because of great famines. Yeah. Horrible. Do you see more power being transferred from the parliaments to communities or local governments? Will this be a trend? Well, I, I've always thought that um, decentralisation is probably the safest way to make the world a safe place. But the, the problem, what's happening is, is we're getting more centralisation. We're getting more... Um, money concentrated um, in in the hands of a few. And that's when things are dangerous. Ideally, in a society, in my opinion, um, it's better to have to think small is good because often um, small communities manage their money better. Small communities are closest to the, to the ground as it were, know where the money should be spent. But um, unfortunately, I don't think that's coming for a while. But I think when we think far into the future when we think golden age i think we will one day have a sort of organization where you don't have heavily focused money in and heavily focused um townships i see more of a world that's kind of more going back to more like a kind of super modern type of village another nice one here coming from pat children have such big hearts my brother used to give these clothes away to other children who were cold and poor. I'm not sure my mother is too pleased. That's a sweet thing to do. Yes, yeah, it's quite a nice little one. Nice, nice way to end it, actually, with some of these yeah. thoughts, isn't it? What does Claire say, Craig? Um, my good deed is feeding a couple of pigeons when oh. they're walking at each morning and finding eight of them waiting for you <laughs> we've got the same thing we've got particularly got two crows they keep bringing us little gifts now don't they yeah they, they bring you a little they bring a little acorn and pop it on the even knocks thing. on the window knocks they? on the window when we the... come and feed us and yeah. we have to go out and feed them they become really tame we've got doves as well uh, yeah the uh, so i think it's nice because nature too you know they all suffer yeah. they all suffer particularly in this heat i teach my children to give to people in need as I do an example to my kids and see their eyes light up and hope restored in humanity. It's a good impact on future it's generations. Lovely, One little act like that, Jodie, isn't it? it that, can, that can overwhelm see, these children, more memorable than these all these children the seem more sensible Twitters. than adults and they give out kindness and love, don't they? Well, when you think about it, children, most the of future. them, pretty old children, are naturally kind, aren't they? Yeah. they and we lose it as we become adults we become more we learn to become oh, selfish we, become, we learn to be awful people perhaps if we could find our innocence again uh we might um we might come to a, a better place which brings me to the point that we're come we're, the, this better place is about to end oh, we've come to the end of the show and um 
although we can we might say a few goodbyes to people um possibly if we want uh, just say a few goodbyes to you now we're coming to the end of the show now and uh Again, thanks for joining us and uh, go and have a look at our website. Of course, if you're interested in any of my books, um, you might enjoy Be Happy um, because uh, you can see it behind this ear, this ear behind me. There, there it is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not the ear, the book. There's a he move that way. There's the book. There's the man. book. Um, Be Happy or the Dream Book, which is over there somewhere by Jane. Um, uh, you can buy them from the website and you can also um, book readings, of course. I think me and Jane are up to our eyeballs in readings at the moment. So I'll oh. oh, come then buy a book anyway. Um, but um, do go on my site, uh, Medium Jane Hampton Parker on YouTube. Um, I pop in now and again when I get inspired and inspirations and, um, and do look about our talks. And also, as I say, keep watching this channel because we love connecting with you. And I'm sure there's some of you that are completely on your own. And it's nice that you make new friends on there. And have you got any more things to say? No, Rick? I think I've run out. I finally, um, I've finally given up on what I can say. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Guys, you always skip my comments. Yeah, so I'll leave well, it as the I'm last one up there. I'm not in charge of them. Craig's doing all this. <laughs> I can't. I would try to grab Hi, everybody's comments, Jane. but the problem is they are Thank moving you. so fast. Like Thank what you, I'm trying Zillions. to click now. Thank you, Nana. I can't keep up with you, you know. So, so, yeah, so we're going to say goodbye now and yes. say thank you to you all. Um, if I can find the appropriate button to click, which is there we go. So we'll see. I think that's it. Yeah, we'll see Ciao. you all soon. Bye.